Hey guys, Sable Eye VGC here, and welcome back to the second episode of Trash or Treasure. Today we're going to finish things up with Weavile, and I'm going to discuss how the rest of this series is going to play out. But uh, we can do that while we're looking for a battle here. So currently sitting at around uh, 2,000 here. Not fantastic, let me change up the music for you guys, so it's not Endless Marnie. But uh, we are going to find a battle, we'll get into this, and then I'll uh, discuss how the series is going to go. We're actually going to find an opponent rated 749th, which is super high. And uh, he's going to be rocking Hatterene, Lucario, Whimsicott, Dragapult, Rhyperior, and Dusclops. So, opponent definitely has a few modes here. He's definitely got that solid Trick Room mode with the uh, Dusclops and the Rhyperior there, as well as the Hatterene. He also has the option to go for the beat up with the Whimsicott and the Lucario, which I think he might try to bring out against our team. But then again, I do have the Follow Me. So, uh, what I am curious about, though, is why there's a Dragapult on his team. But, I mean, Dragapult's a solid Pokemon, so... All right, let's let's pick a team and then uh, go from there. Um, what do I want to do? Excadrill looks decent here. I mean, he can't follow me to get the Trick Room up, which is huge. I'm forced to lead Togekiss because I am petrified of beat up, and I'm not trying to deal with that. So if I lead Togekiss, if I lead Togekiss Dragapult, that can't kill the Hatter. Uh, can it? That covers the Hatterene, but the only thing it doesn't cover is the Dustclops lead. But I mean, I don't have any other way to counter the Dusclops lead. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go for this and hope it works out. Uh, Weavile is useless here. As much as I'd love to bring it, it is basically completely useless. I am going to bring Excadrill and I definitely need Rotom. I could have made a case for Arcanine. Actually, yeah, I could have definitely made a case for Arcanine. I just feel like Excadrill is a little bit of a stronger uh, stronger threat to my opponent's team if he's not... Pr Never mind, communication with the other trainer was interrupted, so... I will definitely be doing another battle, so we will still get two battles in this one. But uh, just while we wait for that to queue up, so here's kind of what I'm thinking for the rest of the series. So what I'm going to do is I'm generally, hey, I wanted the highest rank, look at this. Weavile now has a mas now has a nice little medal that says, you know what, it won at Master Vault here. Even though I technically did not win. But we're actually going to gain a huge amount of points from that too. So let me get this music to random. Okay, back to what I was saying. Uh, so rest of the series, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go three episodes with each Pokemon. And the first episode is, I think what I'm going to do is plan on discussing the options of the Pokemon. And then maybe doing one one battle, maybe two if there's enough time. Uh, the second and third episodes will definitely be... The second episode will be continuing the battles. And the third episode, I may make, ad uh, uh, I may make adjustments or I might just leave it depending on the success we've been having. And then after that, I will make a decision on whether or not the Pokemon is trash or treasure. But for this, I am going to end Weavile here. Just because, you know, like, it was used as a kind of more of a tester rather than an actual trash or treasure episode. But I will make a decision on Weavile after this. And I do want to apologize. I believe in the last episode, I had mentioned that Weavile could get access to knockoff. And I don't. And I didn't know why I didn't have it. I do realize why I did not have it. That is because Weavile in Gen 8 does not get access to knockoff because it was a move to remove. So... Regardless of that, we're going to see what we get here. I didn't see this my opponent's rating here, but it's going to be Durant, Gothitelle, Arcanine, Melodic, Sylveon, and Tyranitar. So, fairly standard team for my opponent here. I believe this was a very similar variant to a team that's, that uh, did very well earlier on in the uh, metagame. But, question is, what do I want to do? Weavile is alright here. It's not fantastic, but it's not horrible. The Sylveon scares me, as well as the Titar and the Durant, so maybe, it's not, maybe it won't make an appearance. However, I wouldn't mind having it for the Gothitelle. Hmm. Uh, how do I want to play this? That Gothitelle's annoying. Just trying to break through this Gothitelle, I think, might end this. I think I'm going to go kiss Weavile, to be honest. We're going to go kiss Weavile, because why not? I 100% want Dragapult if I can keep, the, uh, keep him out of Trick Room. Dragapult solid, and I want Rotom here for sure for that Melodic, otherwise I can't beat the Melodic. So, it's kind of a makeshift uh, game here, we'll see how this goes. I'm almost fairly confident we're about to get run over, but you know what, we'll see what happens. My game plan here is basically hope he leads Durant, and I can catch him off guard with my Togekiss. So I can go for the max Airstream uh, shenanigans, but he's actually going to go with the Sylveon and the Titar. So... This is a horrible thing to lead Weavile into, so I'm 100% going to be swapping that. I technically don't need to swap, because I could fake it. 
So having Kiss and Weavile in front of a T-Tar is 100% not my best, uh, not my best uh, lead ever. However, I don't think it's the end of the world. I could just simply follow me. I'm almost 100% sure he's going to max T-Tar here, so that's the call I'm going to go for. But what do I want to do? Alright, so I've decided to go for the throw chop into Sylvia on here. He's actually going to swap out, which is interesting. But basically the throw chop was to stop a hyper voice. But he's going to swap out, so that's not too big of a deal. I will, sp I, I do stop a uh, Snarl here the next turn, but that's fine. And I air slashed into the uh, Sylveon slot, mainly because I don't want to proc a potential weakness policy on his T-Tar. And we are indeed going to see that Dynamax. So the question is, where does my opponent go with it? I'm okay with this. The early Dynamax, I think, works out in my favor because I can bring Rotom in next turn, which basically walls out this T-Tart, especially because I'm going to max to counter that. But I don't... I'm looking at my end game right now, and I'm thinking it's basically pretty dependent on the end of this turn here and which one he targets. But I think if Rotom can uh, get set up here, Rotom Dragapult could definitely be a solid end game here. So I'm actually going to do over 50% of that Arcanine, which is huge. Which also means that it's probably a very offensive Arcanine rather than a defensive one. He actually is going to Rockfall the Weavile. And I am perfectly fine with that. As uh, I know I'm going to lose Weavile here to the Sand. But I still have Kiss which allows me to go for Follow Me. And having Follow Me here is... I don't want to say huge because it's kind of a poor choice of words. But Follow Me is uh, definitely a lot better than not having Follow Me. We'll put it that way. Hmm. My special weakness policy, Dragapult. Did I, did I build this? Was this the same set? I have no clue. Either way, apparently we're going to be special weakness policy. But it's actually not horrible in this case. It's a bit annoying for the Sylveon, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, I could follow me, although I'm not really too keen on doing so. I'm tempted to Wormwind. However, I don't really want a Wormwind if there's a potential Sylvia in the back. So I think maybe I'll just actually air slash this Arcanine and Wormwind the Tita. Yeah, let's go with this. Let's go with this and see what happens. If I can kill the Arcanine here, we're in a pretty good spot. But I'm not sure if I'll be able to. I don't think air slash... Actually, air slash might knock out. But I mean, Arcanine's obviously going to be faster, especially as an offensive variant here. But he's also probably expecting a follow me, so that I'm expecting a rock fall here from this uh, from this Tyranitar. Okay, so Arcanine's going to protect here. I'm perfectly comfortable with that. That doesn't concern me. Max Wormwind coming out. I'm going to hit into this T-Tar here. Now the question is, did he go for the Darkness or did he go for a rock fall? I'm expecting a rock fall into the Togekiss, but I've been wrong in the past. Uh, Togus is obviously going to go for the Air Slash, and uh, obviously Ar Arcanine is going to protect. And we are going to see a Rockfall that is going to connect, I'm assuming, into what is the Togekiss here. Just to try and for him to get that off the field. Togekiss is actually not going to die, but it will die to the sand in a few minutes. Uh, in a few moments, I should say. I believe sand does that much. Should should chip me down 11. But Arcanine just going to get enough health back from the sand, the, from the sand to proc his berry. Which is a bit annoying, but... Okay, so... With, uh... This is still interesting. With, uh, Drag... Dragapult. With Tyranitar at minus one, I definitely like having Rotom here. Because Rotom is actually safe to probably get a nasty plot off. I just Wormwinded the T-Tar, so the chances of him swapping Arcanine into Sylveon, I'm okay with. So I'm just going to Wormwind the Arcanine now. That should be enough to pick up a knockout, and then T-Tar will be minus two, so Rotom should survive. And then Rotom will be faster than T-Tar, be able to get a Hydro Pump off as well, outside of Max Form. There is, I don't want to say there's a chance we win this game, it's still a long shot, but there is technically still some hope. Wormwind kind of come out, should be enough to pick up this Arcanine, especially after that berry. No, revealing no AV, so Arcanine's going to drop here. T-Tar is now back down to minus 2 attack. He, there's also a chance he crunches, or I guess darknesses at this point. But I think that's a little bit uh, less likely here. He'll probably, I mean if he darknesses, it's probably going to go into the Rotom. Because he, he may want to get the special defense drop for the Sylveon in the back. But he is just going to go for a rock fall right now. 
and that should be targeting the Rotom, I'm assuming. Yeah, so Rotom takes that super well, actually. And, uh, okay, so I'm no longer concerned. No longer concerned about this T-Tar. This T-Tar is quote-unquote dead to me. I mean, Dragapult should be able to deal with it. Oh, okay, Dragapult can't deal with it, but Dragapult and Rotom, well, Rotom's gonna deal with it eventually, but I'm, I'm more scared of the Sylveon that's probably coming back in right now. Is that the Sylveon? Yep, it is indeed the Sylveon. Okay, so the question is, where do I want to go with this target? I'm pretty confident I, he's going to either protect Titar, and even if he doesn't protect Titar, there's no real threat. Like, there's no threat at all. I think I need to go for the Hydro Pump. I don't think Thunderbolt actually does enough damage here. Yeah, I'm almost confident Thunderbolt at plus two is still not enough. So I'm going to go for the Hydro Pump, and I am going to go for a Phantasm. Double this Sylveon. I mean, he might protect, but I don't see how that helps him because I can just double it next turn. Yeah, Sylveon. Oh, T-Tar protects even better. So let's see if we can actually get this knockout here. Okay, it's just a double protect, but I'm perfectly fine with that. I mean, he's stalling out my max, which makes sense, but I'm not too concerned. We'll see how much this Phantasm does here. Okay, not great. Not great damage, but hopefully Shadow Ball and a Hydro Pump should be in, should be in range to pick it up. The defense drop literally irrelevant because you know I'm special Dragapult but Hydro Pump coming out into Sylveon to protect that's fine I definitely need this Sylveon to die here thankfully Sand gives me my berry so it makes up for that Arcanine getting his berry I guess if you want to look at it that way okay if I can manage to pick up Sylveon here it definitely comes down to what his last Pokemon is if Sylveon survives the turn though the game I'm pretty sure the game is just over to a hyper voice let's see if I can kill the Sylveon we're good this is actually going to be, I'm pretty sure this is going to be close. I think it might be enough, but we'll have to see. It's going to be super close. It depends on his spread. If he's super offensive, he'll definitely die. But if he's got, I think even a little bit of bulk, it's going to be, it might be a roll. We'll find out. Only one way to find out, right? His targeting T-Tar here is useless. I need to get the Sylveon off the field. Dragapult, going to go for the Shadow Ball here. Going to target into the Sylveon. Let's look at the damage here. This is, I'm pretty sure Sylveon, that's ah, huge. That could be a huge special defense drop. Rotom's going to go for the Hydro Pump, and it's going to miss, so everything about the special defense drop here is horrible. This actually is brutal, because if Hydro Pump would have connected, I think we win. But I mean, naturally it makes sense that I wasn't going to be able to uh, hit, because I shouldn't have really gotten the special defense drop either. So this Hyper Voice should have gone off either way. I don't think there's a way I win this now. He's actually going to be Throat Spray, which I mean is a common Sylveon item. Just boost his special attack after that, but Sandstorm's gonna subside here. I don't think it matters though. Well, we will get to see if this Hydro Pump will kill Sylvia. Let's see, plus two Hydro Pump into Sylveon. I wonder if I should have Thunderbolted. I should have checked the Thunderbolt kill. Just gone by just going for Thunderbolt here. But Rotom's gonna Hydro Pump, gonna connect. This one should kill. I'm pretty confident in that. Yeah, okay, so Sylveon does drop that. That was a crit, so we still don't know. But I would assume a plus two Rotom into a minus one special defense Sylveon is going to pick up that knockout. Tito is going to crunch here. I guess there's a chance if I survive, but it's unlikely. I do actually live on four, which is kind of funny. But it's game over unless the Pokemon he brings in is something like Durant, and he can't. he's not 100% accurate. It's actually going to be Melodic, so this is actually almost interesting. If this Melodic doesn't have a 100% accurate move, and only has something like Muddy Water, that's actually a decent chance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to protect to scout for the Tyranitar's protect. I don't see a harm in doing that. Just because his best way to win this is to get two, the most, best way of winning this is for him to get multiple Muddy Waters off. And it is Muddy Waters, so there is a chance we can win this. And Titar is going to crunch, that's fine. So Hydro Pump now coming out into Titar. Hopefully picks up the knockout. And if we can dodge a Muddy Water, there's actually a slight chance. I don't think Thunderbolt's enough. Rome's going to Hydro Pump, going to connect out here into the T-Tar. That should pick up the knockout, no doubt in my mind. Yep. So T-Tar is going to drop, and is this Melodic going to connect to Muddy Water? That's the question of the day. Well, actually, the question of the day is what's your favorite Gen 8 Pokemon? But Melodic does actually hit that Muddy Water, so we are going to go down here. But that was a long shot. Missing, honestly, I think missing that, uh, missing that Hydro Pump cost us the game. 100%. Although, yeah, does it matter? I'm trying to. I'm just trying to go through, run, run through this in my head. I wonder if I pump the tar. I mean, I still have to hit the pump. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I was gonna say if I pump the tar and I kill the T tar, 
Sylveon clicks Hyper Voice, that's what procs my policy. Rotom's alive, and then I have a plus two Dragapult on. I mean, at the end of the day, I still have to hit the policy. Uh, I still have to hit the, uh, still have to hit that Hydro Pump, which, I mean, it's a gamble you take with Rotom. Like, it, most, more often it's better than it is, but that's all right. We're gonna see what we get here. One more, hopefully we can get one more game where we can actually kind of use Viva. I guess I activated Siri. <laughs> what did I even say that would possibly activate Siri? Can someone, can someone like describe that for me? We're gonna find Cranberry here with a rating of 5,000. And uh, we're gonna jump right into this. Actually, we're gonna find a pretty cool team here. Kind of like a, almost like a rain team? I guess it's a rain team. Pelipper, Dredna, uh, that's a Togekiss. Ferrothorn, Lapras, and that is a Pikachu, which I'm assuming is going to be G-Max. So, actually, there was an event just uh, last week, I think. It might have been last week. And it was the uh, G-Max Pikachu raids. So, because of that, Lightning Rod Pikachu is now available as a G-Max form. So, that could uh, shake... That's actually probably a pretty good play beside the uh, rain. But good news... Uh, that actually... I don't know he's Rotom. I'm thinking... Good news is we have Rotom, and then I realized, oh yeah, he's a Lightning Rod Pikachu. Uh, Weavile is interesting here. Weavile is definitely interesting here. I definitely want Arcanine because, you know, Ferrothorn. I could also technically get away with just a Dragapult. I think I might just get offensive here and go Dragapult Weavile. It's pretty aggressive, but I almost think it's worth it. I'm going to have Arcanine in the back. And let's see what we get. Well, Lapras is a bit annoying here. I am still going to bring Rotom. Just because Rotom kind of concerns me, uh, just because the rain concerns me. Hydro Pump into Pikachu still does a good chunk of damage. Rotom also can't get paralyzed by the uh, max move, so. Let's see what we get here. Let's see. I think it's going to be uh, very lead dependent. It's going to be Togekiss Lapras, so a little bit annoying. The question I have is Resonance a sound move? I want to say yes. But can I... Throat chop a sound move? Interesting. I mean, he might just follow me here. I'm 100% gonna max and I'm gonna phantasm the, uh, the kiss. The question is, do I want to throat chop and try to throat chop the resonant? You guys want to find out together? Or should we just drop an ISO crash into the toe kiss, pick up the knockout, and go from there? Uh, I'm actually almost tempted to find out. I guess we can always find out next turn because the first resonance will proc our policy, which is kind of what we want anyways. And there's a chance he follows these. So, we're going to go for the Ice Crash to pick up the knockout here onto, to, onto the kiss. Of course, it might not pick up the knockout, but he'd have to be like 252, 252 bold. Especially after a Shadow Ball. Or I guess in this case, a Max Phantasm. So, we've all definitely going to take advantage of this, uh, of this uh, defense drop here. Assuming it hits its Ice Crash. And then next turn, we're going to find out if uh, Resonance is affected by Throat Chop, which would be actually be pretty cool. I want to say it is. Like, I'm almost confident that it picks up and it uh, shuts it down. Because I believe it's a sound move. Like, its whole, Lapras' whole thing is sound, right? Like, it's got the ice on the, I guess, the musical staff there. It's meant to be like music. So I'm assuming Resonance is a sound move. So it'd actually be, I'd actually be curious to see if uh, Throat Chop does shut it down. But we are going to see Kokis go for that follow me, which is fantastic. So happy I didn't go for the Throat Chop this turn. And we're going to see Dragapult go for a Phantasm first. Perfect. I'm also very, very happy that he's maxed his uh, Lapras. Because it shouldn't be able to knock out my uh, weakness policy to uh, Dragapult. And uh, Icicle Crash is going to pick up a knockout here. Yep, Icicle Crash connects, picks up a knockout. Because there's no way he's going to that. Yeah, okay. So Icicle Crash is going to drop Tokus here. And I'm expecting a Resonance into this uh, Dragapult. Let's see what we get. Yep, I'm just gonna be G Max Resonance here into uh, Dragapult, and that didn't pick up a knockout. That actually did a good chunk of damage. That may be Life Orb, but also may just be super offensive. Because normally that brings me down to about 150 health, so. Probably got a little bit more investment than most of the normal ones. But Dragapult's weakness policy is gonna proc here, which is fantastic. Uh, no, weak uh, no Life Orb on this Lapras just yet, and I'm definitely gonna go for it. I am 100% going to throw chop this Lapras. If it works, it works. If not, hey. Like, if it works, then Weavile almost becomes a Lapras counter. Like, that's a, that's an interesting way to stop the, uh... It's a very interesting way to stop the resonance from going up. 
But Pelipper coming in for my opponent here. I'm just going to Phantasm. Actually, I could go for the Flare. I know it's an interesting option. Nah, I'm just going to Phantasm. <laughs> I was going to say I could go for the Flare here. I am going to Throat Chop. If it can hit the Lapras and stop it from getting an attack off this turn, Dragon Pult actually stays alive. So Phantasm coming out. Is this Pelipper going to be sashed? I would say they normally are, so yeah. Pelipper is going to be sashed, that's fine. Uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see if... The question now is, is Resonance going to get stopped by Throat Chop? I'm not even sure if I can stop max moves that are based off Slam. Let's find out. Alright, Lapras... Uh, Pelipper is going to go for a Tailwind. I'm perfectly fine with that, especially if Lapras can't get this attack off. Okay, it does go for the Resonance. Now, I'm not sure if that means Resonance isn't a sound move. Or if that just means that you can't stop the max sound moves. I want to assume it's a sound move, but I don't know. If you guys know, please let me know in the comments, because I'm actually very curious on that now. Obviously, it doesn't stop it, but... Okay, so the Tailwind's a bit annoying here. Obviously, I'm going to come into Rotom here. It's the best, uh, best chance that I have. And Lapras being at minus two defense is also interesting. I almost want to save Weavile. As awkward as that sounds, I almost want to save Weavile. Uh, I really don't want a Thunderbolt here. Because I could see Pelipper swapping into Rotom. Uh, into, uh, yeah. I'm not going to Thunderbolt, so I'm just going to pump to kill the Pelipper. And I am actually going to save my Weavile. I have made that decision. I might, I'm definitely probably going to lose Arcanine here. Although he has to be scared of Rotom in a way. Because Rotom's going to threaten this. This is interesting. I'm assuming his last mod may be Dreadnought. But if it, I, I mean, if his last mod is uh, Ferrothorn and we just sacked Arcanine here, this could be a problem. But I, I'm almost confident he's got to be scared of Rotom in a sense. He's got to be scared of Rotom, no? I think he has to be, but we'll find out. Of course, we're going to get the Intimidate off. Both on the special attacker is not going to matter either way. And Pelipper is actually going to protect. I should have nasty plotted, but that's alright. Let's see what he goes for now. It isn't going to be a lightning, so he is indeed going to be scared of this Rotom. Rotom's still up, that's fine. And that actually doesn't even do 50%, which is perfect. I mean, it's not the greatest because he does get the terrain up. And if it's Thunder, we're dead. But if it's Thunderbolt, we're alright. Let's, we'll have, we'll have to wait and see here. He's got the rain up as well, which is a little bit, which is a tad bit annoying. I'm going to protect Rotom here for sure, because he has to target it. Like I said, he has to be scared of Rotom, right? And I'm 100% going to go for a Snarl here. That'll pick up the Pelipper, and it'll lower this Lapras' special attack. So, if I can get this off, we're laughing. However, if he goes for a Hydro Pump into Rotom, I mean, I guess Scald into Rain is also bad. Right? Although, I guess we get Fake Out Pressure up next turn. Pelipper is going to go Scald into Rain, going to connect into the Arcanine. Is it enough? I think it should be. Yep. Arcanine does indeed drop. Unfortunately, we do not carry ex Extreme Speed on this Arcanine. I mean, it is bulky Arcanine. And Lapras just pumps. So, I wonder if he doubled. I wonder if he doubled. I also wonder if he is Thunderbolt Lapras and can't pick up the Rotom here. Okay, so now I come in with Fake Out Pressure, which is interesting. I also think this may be the last turn of Tailwind. Yeah, okay, so last turn of Tailwind and possibly the last turn of Aurora Veil as well. So, I don't, I want to Fake Out Pelipper, but something tells me he's going to protect. However, Faking Out Pelipper is still better because if he protects next turn, I'm faster. So I'm still going to Fake Out the Pelipper here. And I think I'm going to go for the plot. I think I'm too far behind to not go for the plot here. So we're going to plot and we're going to fake out his Pelipper. I'm assuming Pelipper protects, like I said, but yep. Yeah. So hopefully it's actually just a double protect and I can take advantage of the fake out pressure. But no, okay. Should have faked out the Lapras. Would have had to call right there, which is unfortunate. But uh, Lapras is actually going to go for the freeze dry and that will 100% finish off this road. Should have faked out Pelipper. Uh, sorry, Lapras. Should have definitely faked out Lapras there. We'd probably win that game, I think. Opposing team's Tailwind is gone, and the Aurora Veil, make note, is still up. Hmm. What do I want to do? I think it's game over at this point. I think I would need to crit a Throat Trap into this Lapras. Let's go for it. But I still think it's over, even... I don't think I can beat... I don't think I can 1v3 things with Weavile. I actually did a good shot. I mean, I know he's minus 2. Hurricane coming out, gonna connect into Weavile. Should take me down to close enough to Sash. I mean, I'm not at Sash, but might as well be. Thunderbolt coming out, gonna pick up the Weavile there, so... I would honestly, to make a de final decision on Weavile, I guess, before we switch over to something new, is I'm going to say it is trash. I don't, like, I hate ruling out Pokemon like that, but honestly, I don't, without access to knockoff, uh, obviously, Throat Shop not stopping Resonance, I mean, I didn't really expect it to, but, 
And honestly, it's just too frail to really, really succeed in this meta. Like, Kiss just bothers it big time. It doesn't even Oko Kiss with an Icicle Crash, so that's, that's kind of useless. I mean, if you want to make it work, I think Life Orb, you might be able to knock out Togekiss, which is an option. I also think maybe a supportive Weavile could be pretty cool, because you're so fast, right? And with the new speed mechanics, you can Icy Wind, slow things down. I like something like Icy Wind, Taunt, maybe even Snarl could be cool. Like there's, there's, uh, there's an also a support option, but uh, I, I'm gonna go ahead and say Weavile is uh, trash here. And uh, thank you guys for watching. And we will be back in the next episode of Trash Your Treasure with a brand new Pokemon to feature. And I uh, will see you guys then.